When people think of OIP, they think of the people we've freed from prison. Free clearance now! Free clearance now! He's been exonerated. They dropped all the charges. And he's getting out late this afternoon. Well, God bless all of you guys. You guys are amazing. What a lot of people don't realize is that from the very beginning, we've been pushing the boundaries of reforming the criminal justice system. All we're doing is seeking to get the DNA evidence. And then you have to get the court or the prosecutor to agree to let you test it. Most of the time, they won't let you do that. Things just don't happen immediately. You've got to really sort of prime the pump and you've got to set the stage. When I would meet with a representative or a senator and say, we need to change the way that police show pictures to eyewitnesses. We need a record of what's happening in that interrogation room. Preserving DNA so the police can't just say, oh, we threw it away after trial. Literally, I got looked at like I had three heads. A lot of times people just didn't even understand the need for it. Reforming the criminal justice system, making it more fair, benefits people beyond wrongful convictions. If you're changing the attitude in a police department, if you're changing the way they think about their job, not only is it going to decrease the chance that they're going to go after somebody innocent, it's going to change the way they're interacting with people in the public. In 2007, we began working on an omnibus bill that had the entire sort of national reform package in one bill called Senate Bill 77. I decided to come back with Robert and Clarence. Take me along, okay, and share my story about what happened, and then doors start opening up, people start listening. Robert McClendon's conviction is overturned by DNA. I believe that people will connect with you if you're being honest, and people will connect with you if you're coming from a place of being real and emotional, if you've gone through something. We'd end up having a 45-minute conversation where they would really want to hear what Clarence or Robert had to say. Doing life in prison for something you didn't do is like being in the ocean without a, a life support. And I'd walk out of there and they'd say, well, you have my vote. Governor Strickland signed it in 2010. This is a, a good day for Ohio. It's a good day for justice. Thank you to Mark Godsey, not only for your involvement with this effort, uh, Mark, but for what the Innocent Project has done across the country. Really, honestly, it's because of Clarence and Robert. Robert McClendon, thank you, Robert, for being here. We appreciate the time you've taken. Clarence, thank you, Clarence, for being here. Legislators at the time called Senate Bill 77 the most significant piece of criminal justice legislation in this state in a century, uh, and I believe that's true. I'll now call on Pierce Reed to come forward to testify. If we're really going to be able to stop wrongful convictions from occurring, we have to get in front of them as well as behind them. Part of what's so significant about this bill is that it's bipartisan. Two different representatives from two different parties, two different parts of the state. 92 affirmative votes, no negative votes. Bills are by passed and titled. You never know who's going to be your ally, so you have to go into it open-minded. The chair recognizes Representative Sykes. A House Bill 411 that I passed into law, introduced that with a Republican colleague of mine. Please vote yes in concurrence. Um, also, this is a uh, wonderful bill, and I thank you to my joint sponsor. We think this is a very sound bill. It has been endorsed by the Ohio Innocence Project. We could always call on them and say, this is one of the roadblocks we're coming up with. Is there some case law around this? Because we're hearing something different, and they could come back and advise us. 81 affirmative votes, three negative votes. The Senate amendments are agreed to. When it comes to uh, these certain issues, people should never give up and never stop talking about it. We've got this network of undergraduate college groups called OIPU. It started with three chapters. It now operates on 11 colleges and universities around the state. It connected with me when I first discovered it. I was crying, like I was tearful. I, was, I couldn't believe this happened so frequently. They're putting on events, they're having speakers, they're creating social media posts. A few of our events, people did not know what Ohio Innocence Project is, so informing the public is very important when it comes to OIPU. It teaches the forensic investigators, the future lawyers, the police officers about what we can do better. If we put that mindset in them now, we won't have as many people wrongfully convicted. I noticed that people will get frustrated because the change is not quick. New people that come to this movement or they start an innocence project in another state, 
they'll talk to me and they'll say, I've been doing this for three years and I see very little change. That's the wrong attitude because this is going to take decades. My father, he introduced the first wrongful imprisonment legislation many years ago. I learned about it first from him. One of the worst things that the state can do is wrongfully imprison someone, take their liberty and take their life, and take time away from their families and their communities, and we have to right these wrongs. Dean Gillespie likes to say, you know, when he was in prison, he was hollering and screaming that he was innocent. I didn't do it. I did not do it. I'm not the guy. We've got to be hollering and screaming. This has to change. I could spend a day here just talking to you about tragedies. It's not particularly uplifting. You have plenty of other tragedies to deal with. But I think a lot of those cases that are most tragic are ones where it was someone who believed in the system. And many of them, the first time they realized that they had made a mistake was when they heard the word guilty. We are the organization in Ohio that has a track record of engaging in criminal justice reform, changing police procedures, documenting police procedures, training police properly, changing the culture in police departments. It could be any one of us in that position. The majority of our clients are people of color, and I think the biggest thing about it is the socioeconomic background. They don't have the money to fight the way they need to fight within the system, and unfortunately, with the criminal justice system and the way it is now, money speaks a lot. Saving people's lives, how can you put a number on it? How can you put a price on saving somebody's life? None of this would be possible without our donors. Every dollar given to OIP is going straight into helping some hardworking, underpaid person who's trying to change the criminal justice system. They were my dream team because they made my dreams come too. As corny as that may sound, it's, it's true. As long as we know that there is kind of a watchdog and someone that's going to be out there holding uh, people accountable, that means the legislature, that means executive branch, that means the judicial branch, uh, we need that. It's a long-term process. It's not going to be a quick fix, but we got to keep hollering and screaming.